from making TikTok videos trying to go viral as a TikTok star to smashing expectations by having her song charting number 67 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, which is an unbelievable milestone in itself, but also charting number 7 on the UK Top 40 Singles chart. This girl right here is on the biggest rise in South African music history. Yes, I know you are all yelling Master KG Jerusalem at the back of my ears, but hear me out. We are talking about the Billboard Hot 100 chart, the one from the United States, right? Okay, maybe some of you don't even know what Billboard Hot 100 actually is. Let me quickly explain that. The Billboard Hot 100 is the music industry standard for the recording industry chart in the United States. It's published weekly by Billboard magazine and chart rankings are based on sales, online streaming and radio plays in the United States. From my knowledge about music, the Billboard Hot 100 chart is the most prestigious weekly chart in the entire world. If you chart on the Hot 100, then you have definitely hit it big in the music industry. Because we all know the United States is the Mount Rushmore of music at the moment. The second most prestigious chart in the world is the UK Singles Chart. This has always been the way of the music industry since before the age of the Beatles and the UK invasion of the United States music scene. The US chart comes first, then the UK chart follows behind. These two places are where every musician wants to blow up, technically. Let me make a quick example. Bad Bunny has been the biggest Latin music artist for years now, and he has been dominating global charts, but until his album charted number one on the Billboard 200 chart with massive units, people didn't give him the global superstar status, the kind of status that you see on people like Drake, Ariana Grande, and Billie Eilish. Anyway, back to Tyler. What this girl is pulling off is bigger than most people have actually caught on here in South Africa. And you even get a lot of people hating on her as well, which is quite weird because at the rate this girl is going, she has the potential to become the second South African artist to truly go global by penetrating the United States since Black Coffee did it, or should I say also since Huma Sekela actually did it. The first time I heard Tyler, I honestly thought she was just another copy trying to make it in this cutthroat South African music scene. When I actually listened to her song Too Late, I actually noticed something different. Baby, We're at the peak of the ama piano genre and this specific song didn't sound like an ama piano song. Yes, it had ama piano elements, but it didn't sound like all the other songs that were being released. I was hungry to hear more of Tyler. I wanted to eat up all her music, but like most artists that blow up too quickly, there was no music for me to actually eat up, or should I put it in simple terms, there was no music for me to actually find and actually listen to. I was completely disappointed if I speak honestly, I waited weeks, weeks turned to months, months turned to two actual years, and there was no new Tyler project buzzing in my ears. So I actually gave up on Tyler and started to view her as maybe she was probably a one hit wonder. Tyler didn't really hit my radar until some time few weeks ago when I actually decided to search her name and imagine the shock when I realized this TikTok star and someone I was viewing as a one hit wonder had actually released more than three more hit songs. Oh, she was no longer a one hit wonder in my eyes after that. Getting a feature from a big name like Arya Star, that truly shocked me. What really shocked me even more is that 11 million views next to her audio of the song Water. I binge listened to her songs until I reached the song Water and I was genuinely blown away. Where is Tyler going right while others didn't hit the level that she's currently hitting right now? Presentation and having a bigger market. Tyler's target market and her vision are completely bigger than the visions of other talented musicians like Shekinah, Bohle, Cooper Pabi, and Lady Zama. Why do I say this? Before you guys go on a rampage, when I listen to Tyler's songs, what really stuck out to me the most is the fact that she leans heavily towards Afropop and R&B fused together. It takes years for a genre from another continent to even start trending in the United States because Americans love their own shit. They rather live for basketball and NFL while the entire world supports football or what they call soccer. They rather have baseball while the whole world has cricket. Basically, Americans love to feel different and unique from the rest of the world. So it truly takes a lot to successfully popularize a genre from your country in the United States. Some of you may not know this, 
but K-pop took more than 10 years to finally crack the United States and become a cultural phenomenon over there. PSY or Psy released Gangnam Style years ago introducing the United States and the entire world to K-pop. Open Gangnam Style! But it was only until BTS and Blackpink came around with back-to-back -back viral moments or back-to-back -back hits that K-pop truly started cracking and eventually popping in American charts, especially the Billboard 200 Albums chart, which is actually harder to crack than the Hot 100 chart. So what I'm saying here is, the ama piano genre is being introduced to the United States and slowly gaining momentum, but it takes something more special to successfully have a genre becoming popular in the United States. Just as Afropop required Banner Boy, Davido and Wizkid blowing up insanely in the UK and then getting a few Drake and Chris Brown features before successfully becoming extremely popular and household names in the United States. Wizkid, come closer. Yeah. The video blow my mind. Benna boy, hold my hand. Whenever I'm broken, you make me feel Whenever I'm lonely. Basically, Afropop really had to get massive names to bring prestige to the genre in the United States. So Afropop at large has more prestige than its subgenre Ama Piano. Cooper Puppy went into a subgenre and thus becoming extremely popular here in Africa and slowly penetrating the UK. Butle as well is a similar case as Cooper Puppy. It will take a lot for them to start climbing that ladder from being categorized in a subgenre from Afropop to actually being seen in a similar light that we see Afropop stars like Wizkid, Banner Boy, Diamond Platinums and even Tyler right now. Or should I say also artists like Thames or, should, or do they call it Tim? One of my favorite Afropop artists right now. But this is where Tyler went lucky. Even though I believe luck is due to proper preparation and properly planning things, Tyler didn't go into a subgenre. Despite how enticing it is to become an ama piano artist because everyone becomes very popular extremely fast in this genre since it actually took over South African airways. Tyler went for the heavily saturated main genre of Afropop and actually got lucky that South Africans are very supportive of their local artists. When Tyler released her song Water, she ascended to Afropop stardom. And since the way has been paved by Banner Boy and Rema and other artists, so reaching virality in the main Afropop genre means her music already has ears ready to listen to her in the United States. Basically, she chose a road with more traffic for her to sell her music. This is why Tyler has instantly gained more potential than every other modern day South African musician. She has reached the kind of traffic that every musician in the entire world actually dreams of having, chatting high up in the United States. I'm not saying she is now done and she has made it. No, no, no. You should all know that the United States is the toughest place to stay relevant in the music world. She can't afford to wait two years again like she did after releasing the song Too Late. Tyler, you have actually made it big now, but your eyes need to stay on the prize. She needs to go full on Ariana Grande and full on Rihanna mode and release music every single year. Rihanna and Ariana didn't just become the biggest overnight. Heck, I had Ariana Grande in 2015 and fell in love with her songs The Way, Problems. I heard Ariana through Iggy Azalea. As you all know, Iggy was extremely popular at the time because everyone was calling her the successor to Nicki Minaj throne. But just look at the number of hits Ariana had to release before reaching the milestone numbers in the music industry and becoming a modern day queen of pop. She released Problems, Focus, Bang Bang, Side to Side, but only reached household status when she released her album Dangerous Woman years later. She was releasing music every single year. This is how a big name is made. Tyler, you have to increase your speed instead of taking your foot off the gas. Unless you believe you are another extremely talented unicorn like Bruno Mars and Adele, then you can actually wait a year or two if you want to. The music industry is heavily saturated, but Tyler has reached a market that will become dedicated to her. There are not many Afropop artists that actually give off the aura of a pop star. Tyler has that aura. Her music, her sound, her looks, her dance routines. She is the full package of an artist that is bound to get a cult-like audience in the Afropop genre and maybe even the United States as a country if she releases more hit songs. Her music video of the song Water already has more than 7 million views in only a week. And I would love to congratulate Tyler for making it bigger than she probably ever dreamed of. There is more probably coming her way. She just has to keep her foot on the gas. 